Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord for another blessed day that he has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good evening. Good evening, everyone who's joining in tonight. I bless you for your support, the weekly support for the Bible class. We want to extend our condolences this evening to the Anderson family, Cannon family, Davis family, our church family during that time of a loss. And we pray that God comfort their broken hearts, <clears throat> heal and deliver, strengthen and empower them to get through that moment of sorrow. So we're going to go ahead into a word of prayer and go ahead and start our lesson tonight at 605. We always start at 605, no later than that. And now the Lord have his way. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy bestowed upon us. For your strength in the time of weaknesses. For your power working in our weaknesses, God, to strengthen. We ask God tonight, forgive us our sins and our transgressions, our trespasses. Cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts. Saturate in your anointing. Empower us by your grace, O oh God, to stand on your word. We know sometimes, God, we get frustrated. It's been just tragedy, incident after incident, since the beginning of the year. There are many people who are hurting God, whose hearts are broken. But I believe, God, that you are the mender of the broken heart. That you have the power to deliver. To set people free, God, from the inside out. And I ask, Father God, that you will have mercy on those families who have lost a loved one, even my family, God. The Estes, our cousin, who have lost a relative. That you would mend the brokenness tonight, O oh God. To encourage, to edify, to build us up on our faith to trust you. We ask you heal right now, God, by your spirit. That you saturate in your anointing. Give us your strength to endure, power to overcome. For we know you're faithful to your word, God. When your children cry, to answer us and deliver according to your will. Now anoint this tongue, O oh God, tonight to speak your word that will help encourage your people to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are. Give us a rhema word, revelation that comes from the heart of God that will have changed our lives for the better. And I thank you, Lord God, that thou would keep us in perfect peace as our minds are stayed on thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Anyone following along in the book? It's going to be page 88 tonight. Starting page 88. And we pray that something be said tonight that help you in your Christian walk with the Lord. <clears throat> To overcome strongholds, struggles, anger, offenses, to overcome the attitude of the flesh, to have the mind of Christ, that you would learn how to live free from offense and the traps of the enemy 
For the enemy loves to bait God's children to stumble back into the place where God has delivered them from, to keep them bound. But tonight we are believing that the word of God has the power to set us free from the inside out. As we believe it by faith and trust God in his word, it shall be done unto us. Amen. Amen. So, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read a devotion tonight. It's from the book, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. If you don't have this book, you might want to get this book, Jesus Calling. It's very inspirational. It's a yearly devotional that you can apply to your life every day. Okay? Praise God. So tonight it says, My peace is the treasure of treasures, the pearl of great price. It is an exquisitely costly gift, both for the giver and the receiver. I purchased this peace for you with my blood. You receive this gift by trusting me in the midst of life's storms. If you have the world's peace, everything is going your way. You don't seek my, unfaith, my unfathomable peace. Let me read that again. If you have the world's peace, everything is going your way. You don't seek my unfathomable peace. Thank me when things do not go your way because spiritual blessings come wrapped in trials. Adverse circumstances are normal in a fallen world. Expect them each day. Rejoice in the face of hardship, for I have overcome the world. Rejoice in the face of hardships, for I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. That is so awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's about to share this with somebody else today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I pray that's encouraging to you. You allow God to fill your heart with his peace. For the world can't give you peace that God can give in the midst of adversity, trials, and tests. And the enemy, he can't take it away because he didn't give it. What God gives is eternal. And the enemy cannot snatch it from you unless you give it away freely. So tonight, I want to encourage you. <clears throat> Read Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 11, and Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 through 10, in your spare time. Read those scriptures. And one point I want to say tonight, let God fill you with courage to move past your failures. Let God fill you with courage to move past your failures. Don't allow the past failures to prevent you from your future success. Don't allow the past failures to prevent you from future success. And number three, find courage to move forward by keeping God in the picture. Find faith, courage to move forward by keeping God in the picture. In other words, put God before you that when you go out and trials and tests comes your way, keep God before you because he has the power to lead you forward past adversities. Matter of fact, God would take your trials and use them as a blessing to promote you into the place he has for you in your life. But if we don't believe God's word, don't trust in God, God in his word, we don't read God's word, don't study God's word, how can we expect the Lord to empower us when things happen in our life that throws us off course to put us back on track? How can we expect God to use us in the kingdom when we allow our minds to be torn apart by tragedies in our lives? by incidents, by occurrences, tribulations, troubles. God has the ability to help us move past anything 
the enemy brings against you only if you trust him in his word. Last week we talked about God gives grace to the humble. And we all know that if it had not been for the Lord, we would never made it this far. If it had not been for God extending his mercy and his grace towards us, his children, every time we mess up, every time we make mistakes, God is the only one that has the power to restore you, to heal you, to deliver you, to set you free from the inside out. It's up to you to make a decision in yourself that I'm going to trust God in his word. So even if I mess up, don't make excuses. But have a repentful heart because a repentful heart, it says a broken spirit <clears throat> and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise. A heart that's remorseful, a heart that's sorry for making mistakes, and a heart that's surrendered to God's Lordship through Jesus Christ, where God has the power to restore you, to revive you, to refresh you, to cleanse you, to make the slate clean as if you never even messed up. Isn't that wonderful? That's great news. That's great news. Really. God bless you, Pastor Denise. God bless you. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Yes, that's right. Lights. The lights need to say amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Our, our, tonight our subject is in our book on page 88. If you follow the book, page 88. <clears throat> but if you have the Kindle version on your tablet, on your computer, on your phone, it's page 78. Page 78. It says, Lord, I have served you. So why? Lord, I serve you, so why? That's a question. When I read this, this in this book a while ago, it pondered me because many people have been serving the Lord for 20, 30, 40 years, and some people still don't know why they serve the Lord. They've been serving the Lord, and yet they still don't understand why they serve the Lord. And one thing about God, God gives us an insight through the power of the Holy Spirit to get an understanding of the sovereignty, the holiness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God towards us, a sinful people. And yet people still don't have the revelation. They go through the motions and say, I'm serving God, but inwardly, they're still disconnected because Jesus says like this, this people, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me because we, we come lip service when it comes to God. And we wonder why things are so chaotic in our life because we're saying we're serving God until something happens to us that we don't understand why God allowed trouble to come into our life, why God allowed me to lose my job, why God allowed my finances to be jacked up, why God allowed me to lose my home, why God allowed this, allowed that to happen in my life, and, and, and take my loved ones, all these different things, and we still wonder why. So in our book, the author wrote, said, when I was a pastor, a sharp 14-year-old young man who was, was well-respected by his friends and leaders was in a youth group. He was a good student and accomplished athlete, zealous for the things of God. The young man served faithfully, volunteered for every project. He took a mission trip with us, witnessing to most, almost everyone he met. At one point in his life, he spent four hours a day in prayer. He heard many things from the Lord and shared them with others. What he shared was always a blessing. He acknowledged his call to ministry and wanted to be a pastor before the age of 20. He seemed to be an unshakable rock. I love this young man, recognized the call of God on his life, and invested my time in him. I had only one concern. He seemed to have too much confidence in himself. I wanted to say something to him, but did not have to, a release to do so. I knew a change would come. He weathered some tough storms and yet stayed strong. Sometimes I questioned my discernment as I saw him endure several severe trials. A few years passed. 
he moved and I began to travel full time. But I kept in touch with him. I knew he would go through a, a breaking process. Since it had to take place, I had no idea what would happen, but I realized it was necessary for him in order to fulfill his destiny. This would be similar process to Simon Peter's sifting. And we always we talked about that recently, recent lessons. How sometimes God will let you go through a sifting in your walk with him. And then that sifting is uncomfortable. And many times when God takes us through the sifting process, it's to perfect us, to shake things off our lives that hinders us from progressing to the next stage or level in our calling. When we when we come to the place <clears throat> in ourselves and we tell God, I surrender to you, all to Jesus, I surrender all to you, God, I give everything I have to you, and I want you to lead God and direct me, there are going to come some troubles in your life. There are going to come some storms in your life. There are going to be some hiccups in your life. There are going to be some obstacles in your way. And we have to maintain a righteous stand in the presence of the Lord. Even when I'm broken. Even when my life is torn apart. When everything is in a shamble. I still need to have in myself a determination. I'm going to continue to move forward by faith. That's why I love when Apostle Paul wrote... In Philippians, what, that 3.14 said, so I press toward the mark for the prize of the high cost of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because in the pressing, there are some things become uncomfortable. And in the pressing, God has to squeeze some stuff out of you that prevents you from going to the higher level in Christ. So that pressing produces the oil. So unless I go through the process of being broken, being crushed, be sifted, I will never produce the oil of the anointing to take me to my calling, to the next level God wants me to go. So he said, I realized this young man had to go through a sifting process. So when this young man was 18, his father contracted an incurable cancer. The, this young man and his mother fasted and prayed that his dad would be healed. And join and join them with and his dad joined them in prayer as well. Only months earlier, his dad had committed his life to the Lord to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The father's condition grew worse. Grew worse. I was ministering in another city in Alabama when my wife called, urging me to telephone this young man. I reached him and could see he needed someone to encourage him. I drove all the night after my last service, arriving at his house. And at four in the morning, his father's condition was so severe that the doctors gave him only days to live. He could not even communicate. The young man was confident that his dad would rise and be healed. I ministered to the family, left several hours later. The next morning, he had, he had called saying things had taken turn for the worse. Lisa and I prayed immediately. This is the pastor and his wife. And as we did... God gave my wife a vision of Jesus standing by his, the man's bedside, ready to take him home. 30 minutes later, a young man called and told that his father had passed away. He seemed to be the same strong self, but that was only at the beginning. That night, he called for some of his close friends to tell them his father had died. When they answered the phone, they were crying. He wondered how they already heard the news. But they hadn't heard. The tears they were crying were for the ones of his best friend who had just been killed in an accident. And one day he lost his father and a very good friend. Isn't that something? Even at the point when our hearts become crushed because the loved one had passed away, then another tragedy happened or something else happened after that. So it's like more pressure on top of the pressure of our experiencing of the pain in my heart during the loss of a loved one. Then something else, someone else loses their life. The shaking had just begun. He was bewildered, frustrated, and numb. The present God seemed to have eluded him. A month later, driving home, the young man came upon an, incident, an accident that had just taken place. He had an emergency medical training, and he stopped. Everyone in both cars was close friends to his. Two died in his arms while he was trying to help the other one. My young friend had reached his limits. 
He spent three hours in the woods praying and crying to God. Where are you? You said you would be my comforter and I have no comfort. How many times have we been in that position in our hearts? Well, we cried and we cried to God for answers, for comfort, for release. And it's like God was silent. It seems as God has turned it back to him. But this was, in fact, the first time in his own strength he had failed. Before, you know, we just got to this point, the young man was very confident in God. He was praying, walking his calling, and, his, and God was using him mightily. But he was so confident in himself to where he wasn't relying on God's strength. He relied on his own strength. So God had allowed him to go through a shaking process to show him who is in control of his life. So as the shaking has begun, all these different tragedies have taken place where people that he loved the most would begin to die at the, one after the other, after the other, after the other. He became angry with God. Why he allowed this? He was not angry with the pastor, his family, or me. His offense was with God. He was consumed with frustration. God had failed him in an hour of his greatest need. Many times, we all face that same moment in time. We got frustrated with God. We got angry with God. We're mad at God. Saying, God, why? Why, God? Why you let this happen? I trusted you. I've been praying. I've been standing your word. And it seems like you failed me. And yet, God still shows himself merciful to the unmerciful. Still be compassionate to those who don't want to receive your compassion. Lord, I serve you and laid many th things down to follow you, he prayed. Now you have abandoned me. I believe God owed me, you owe me something for all that I had given up to serve you. Many people have experienced hurts and disappointments that are less extreme and some that are more. Many become offended with the Lord. They believe he should take, no, should take into consideration all they have done for him. They are serving him for the wrong reasons. We not we, we, we should not serve God or serve the Lord for what he has done, what he can do for us, but rather who he is, what he has already done for us. Those who become offended do not fully recognize how great the debt he has already paid for them to be free. They have forgotten from what manner of death they were delivered. They see through eyes natural, through natural eyes rather than eternal. So in other words, we get blindsided because we're looking at things through the external and not the spiritual. We're looking at things through the flesh and not the eyes of God. And many times we do that, that's when frustration enters our hearts. That's when unbelief settles in our hearts. That's when the anger gets in our hearts. That's when the malice gets in our hearts. Because I feel like, God, you should have stopped this from happening in my life. But a lot of times, God will let you go through the storms like he did with the disciples on the boat. He let them face the storms. He let them face obstacles. He let them face persecution. In order for their faith to grow in his word, his ability, and trust in him to deliver. The young man stopped going to church. He started running around with the wrong crowd. Frequently bars and parties. And it's frustrated. He wanted to do nothing with the things of the Lord. He wanted to avoid any contact with God. He could not keep up with his lifestyle any longer than two weeks. For his heart was deeply convicted. He, but he still refused to approach the Lord for six months. Even then, the heavens seemed to be as brass. The presence of the Lord seemed to be nowhere to be found. Why? Because he allowed his heart to be callous. Many times we do the same thing. We allow our hearts to be so bitter towards the Lord because so much stuff happens in our lives. So I'm mad at God. I don't want to trust God. I don't want to serve God because I'm angry. You know, I went through that myself when I went through divorce the first time in 2012. I call myself being angry at God. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to worship. I'm not going to church. Just like this young man, I'm going to live my life 
according to the dictates of my flesh in the absence of God. But I found out that when you've been in this thing of serving the Lord for a very long time, even when you try to silence the voice of God from speaking to you, God still speaks. When you try to close your eyes to hear and seeing God, revelation through his word, God still speaks. He still shows you things in dreams. Why? Because he still have a connection with you in the spirit. Even though the flesh is being rebellious and being stubborn and acting now, God still has his hook in you. You can't stray far enough where God can't reach you. You can't shut out God's ears where he can't speak to you. Because your ears are still connected to God in the spirit and God still speaks through revelation by the Holy Spirit of the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So God still speaks through his word and lets you know, hey, I'm still here. Even though you're mad at me, even though you're trying to turn your back on me and walk away from me, I'm still there with you. So when the moment you make up your mind, decide to repent, turn your life back over to the Lord, God says, I got you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to set you free. And God does just that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Over a year had gone by. Through several incidents, he saw that God was still at work in his life. Isn't that something? A year went by in his rebellion. God allowed several incidents to continue to be revealed in his face. To show him and to prove to him that I'm still there. He approached God, but now it was difficult. He became humbly. After this time of trials was over, the Lord showed him he had never left him. The very thing I'm just talking about. Even though we try to do things our way and ask of God, God still proved himself to be still there. He never left him. As his spiritual walk was restored, he learned to put his confidence in God's grace, not his own strength. After he came to repentance of giving his life back to the Lord, God said, oh, you know what? Enough is enough. Now I'm going to refresh you. I'm going to revive you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to replenish my strength in you. So now you're humble that my strength can become perfect in your weakness. I kept in touch with him. A year and a half, he told me things he had seen himself that he never knew were there. I was a man without character and shallow in all my relationships. I was raised by my dad to be strong outwardly and self-made man. I could never have grown the way God wanted me to. I am thankful the Lord did not leave me in that condition. So a self-made man in other words, a selfish man, a prideful man, he become. But God had to show him that your condition was a candidate that qualified you to walk now in my grace of restoration. And God never left him, but he was still there to empower him to humble himself before the mighty hand of God. Then now God can use him in the kingdom, in the purpose, in the calling he placed on his life. But what grieved my heart the most was not running around in bars and drinking. It was that I had turned my back on the Holy Spirit. Isn't that something? Because when you got that connection, the relationship with God, the Holy Spirit is still there. The Holy Spirit is still drawing you to come back to the Lord in repentance. He's still there, a perfect gentleman who would not violate your will. He'll let you walk in your will, walk in your own plan, your own ways of doing things, until you finally make up your mind, say, God, I can't do it no more. I done went to the bars, I done went to the club, I went back fornicating, went back adulterating, I went back, Father, doing the things my flesh wanted me to do in the absence of God to shut you out. But now I realize, God, that the Holy Spirit was still there, drawing me back. And when he made up his mind, now he's in a place 
where God restored the love and the relationship with him. He said, I love him so much. My fellowship with him has never been as sweet as it is now. In the midst of all the tragedies, all the trials, all the troubles, all the sifting, all the shaking, all the breaking, all the brokenness. Now he says, my relationship with God has never been as sweet as it is right now because now I've been restored back in right standing and right relationship with God. A lot of shaking occurred in his life. Self-confidence was eliminated. Isn't that awesome? Your self-confidence is a form of pride. We talked about this in previous lessons, how a selfish person would try to shut out the voice of God and not walk in truth and righteousness, but walk in stubbornness and offensive lifestyle against God. Your offense would keep you from walking in surrenderance. Your offense would keep you quickly in an attitude of the flesh to fly off the handle and attack other people. But the Lord has promised that when we come to a place of allowing the Holy Spirit to fill our lives, he will activate Galatians chapter 5, verse 28, the fruit of the Spirit. He activate the fruit of the Spirit in your life and cause you to come to the place where you realize that if it had not been for the fruit of the Spirit, I would not be who God wanted me to be. Isn't that awesome? Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, I'm not Galatians 5, 28, 5, uh, 22. Correction, Galatians 5, verse 22. It's beginning the fruit of the Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So 5, verse 22 and 23. So that's the fruit of the Spirit. So when you allow yourself to surrender, he gives you temperance, he gives you self-control, he gives you a meek heart, a compassionate heart, a gentle heart, a good heart, a faithful heart, a long-suffering heart, a loving heart, a joyful heart, a peaceful heart, to where no matter who offends you, I am still going to operate in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Offenses is a form of pride. Instead of building his life, let me read this here. It said, but this young man had the foundation that Simon Peter had, and it could not be shaken or taken away. Instead of building his life and ministry through pride, he has now been his life by the grace of God. Instead of building his life founded on pride, a stubborn, hardened heart, a callous heart. Now his life is built on a pliable heart of love and the grace of God. Offenses will reveal the weaknesses and the breaking point in our lives. Isn't that something? If you want to know your heart, what's in your heart is not of God, get offended. Because your offense will activate the thing that's inside you is not of God and cause you to retaliate, to attack somebody else from the thing that's large, and I've talked about this before, in the treasure chest of your heart. We have some things in our lives, in our treasure chest, in our hearts that we hold on and cherish that's not of God. And when you become offended, the treasure chest is unlocked and the thing that's not of God now begin to blurt out of your mouth and spew out of your mouth and hurt somebody else. Because I was angry. They shouldn't have did what they did to me. They shouldn't have said what they said to me. So now my flesh is aroused by the treasure chest of my heart. So I say things that's not of God and I hurt other folk because I've been hurt. That is so awesome. So awesome. Often the point we think we're strong is our place of hidden weaknesses. That is a very good point. Very good point. When you think you're strong, the words that he who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. <coughs> Excuse me. Galatians 5, verse 28. 
excuse me. He who thinks he stands, take heed lest he falls. It will remain hidden until a powerful storm blows away the cover. Isn't that something? We can think we're so strong, so cocky, arrogant, haughty, prideful. Think we're standing, but let the storm blow. It will begin to reveal the covering of what's really lied in your heart that's been camouflaged by sin. And God says the hidden things that you've been treasuring in your heart that's not of me, I have to blow it off for you. So I got to allow the storms to come. I got to allow people to persecute you. I got to allow people to, to provoke you. So those things that are hidden will come to forefront so you can be delivered. Unless God allows stuff to happen in our lives, we will never be delivered from the hidden treasures in our heart. The Apostle Paul wrote, for we are, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. So have no confidence in the flesh. In other words, don't rely on yourself. Because yourself is going to mess you up. Yourself is going to lead you astray. Yourself is going to cause you to fall. So rejoice in Jesus Christ. Have no confidence in the flesh. We can do nothing of eternal value in our own ability. It is easy to say, say this, but having this truth deeply rooted in our, in our being is another matter. So if you say you got the word of God rooted in your heart, let trials happen. Let stuff happen to you to cause you to get out of character or provoke you out of character. If you're rootly, deeply rooted in the word of God, it's going to prove yourself when adversities come. I was looking at uh, another scripture tonight. Let's see here. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. In 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 24. 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 24, if you're taking notes. It says, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he has done for you. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. Why? Because I serve the Lord my heart from his truth, I will become easily offended. See how that works? If I serve the Lord, and that God told the children of Israel, he said, thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength. That covers your entire being. And him only shall thou serve. God tells Samuel, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. Because if I serve the Lord with my entire being, it doesn't matter when offenses come. It's not going to move me out of my character. If I'm walking in integrity, we teach our leaders in our church about character and integrity. So if I'm being honest with myself and being loyal to the Lord, I'm not easily provoked. I'm not easily angered. I'm not easily moved out of my character when stuff happens to me because my soul is anchored in Jesus. And that is so awesome. We can do nothing of eternal value in our own ability. It is easy to say this, but having this truth deeply rooted in our being is another matter. So having this truth deeply rooted in our beings is, a, is, is another matter. Why? Because that's when it tests you. If truth is rooted in your heart, you're not going to easily follow a lie. So like Eve in the garden, when Satan came to test her, he told her half truth, but he twisted it with a lie. And the enemy does that. If you don't know the word of God, you don't study your Bible, 
You're not praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. How are you going to know the heart of God? Think about it. How can I know what God speaks to me if I don't take the time out to study God's word? So when offenses come and Satan baits me by sending individuals in your life, just keep nitpicking and nitpicking and nitpicking. Keep on just stabbing you. Keep twisting the knife in you. Keep talking about you. Keep slandering you. Gossiping about you. How am I going to recognize the enemy in a, when he comes to me? The only way I can know the enemy is when I get into God's word and God's word begin to speak truth to me. So if I humble myself in the sight of the Lord, guess what God does? He lifts you up above adversities. He lifts you up above trials. And I'm not talking about physically, but spiritually. So even though things does happen, in my life, I'm lifted up in the spirit realm, in the place where God's glory to well through the Son, Jesus Christ, to gain victory over the obstacles, the trials, the situations, the tests in my life. God lift me up where I can stand firm and face adversities in his strength. The word tells us Submit to God, resist the devil, and guess what? He'll flee from you. If I don't do what the word tells me in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the full armor of God, how am I going to stand against the enemy? Ephesians chapter 6. My God, my God. Begin at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally... It's a conclusion for all the things he talked about, the servants and all this stuff he talked before. He said, finally, there's a, a major point I want to share with you. My brethren, be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak. Don't be tim timid. Don't be fearful. Don't be a coward. Don't be a wimp. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power, he's talking about that dunamis power, the anointing, the explosive power of his might. Because when Jesus comes on the scene, his power, when you allow Christ to come into your heart to take control of your life, that's when his power is activated, that dunamis power. But it only becomes explosive. Check this out. God gave me this revelation. The only way the word of God becomes explosive against the kingdom of darkness is when I speak the word. Something that simple. When I speak what God says about my situations, I speak to the mountains, I speak to the storms, I command the mountains to move, it will obey me. Why? Because I speak with the authority of the word. So if when you pray, believe the things you're, you're praying for, believe you receive them, you will have them. Why? Because I speak the word over my situation, which becomes doing him as power against the enemy. So whatever gets in my way, when I speak the word, the word, it compels me to stand in faith, to believe God that your word going to move the mountain. Whatever sickness, whatever condition is that affects my body, affects my children, affects my family, affects my marriage, affects my church, affects my community, guess what? I speak the word. When I speak the word in agreement with the body of Christ, we all come together when the court to speak the word. The word has to do in this power to make things happen, to bring an explosion in the atmosphere around us to destroy the attacks of the enemy. We all can come together and be delivered. We all come together and be healed. We all come together and be strengthened because we're speaking the word. But then he says, put on the full or the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So when you pay attention to the details, God spoke to me that years ago when I was in the hospital with cancer, going through chemo. He said, pay attention to details. Many things happen in our lives. There's a message. Somewhere there's a subliminal message the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to you. But we miss it because we're looking at our situations 
to blind vision. You already said to blind vision. So a blind person can't see. In other words, I can't see. So my vision becomes obscured through the situations. So I can't see God moving in my situation because I allow blindness to control. But when I look at my situation through the eyes of faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Why? Because I can't see it in the natural eyes, but I know by faith it's already done. And that's what God says according to his word. That when I speak the word, the word begins to explode the attacks of the enemy in my life. It stops them in this trap. And then when I put on full armor, I put on Jesus Christ. The word tells us, take off the flesh and put on, be clothed on Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because I take off myself, my selfish ambitions, my selfish attitude, my selfish ways. Now I can be clothed and covered, protected, shielded, guided, led, driven by the Holy Spirit. Because now I got Jesus Christ who's going before me. And if he goes before me, who can stand against me? That's a powerful word. That's a powerful word. So if Christ goes before me, who has the power to stand against me? I thank the Lord through Jesus Christ that his strength becomes a supernatural strength in our lives. When we can't deal with the situation in our own accord, the Holy Spirit kicks in like a generator. When the power goes out, you got a generator connected to your house or your establishment. When the storm go goes and blows out the lights, blows out the energy, blows out the power. In other words, you become weak. When your power is, is gone, you become weak. You become vulnerable. Easy to attack. But when the generator, whoo, hallelujah. When the generator of the Holy Spirit kicks in, there's a supernatural strength that empowers you to rise above the situation and tell God, thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. So when my strength becomes weak, his strength becomes perfect in my weakness. So now I have the power and the ability to endure and overcome because greater is he that is in where? In me than he that's in the world. And if he's the greater one that lives inside of me, guess what? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I pray that it helps you tonight. I pray that it encourages you. Keep standing on his word. If the word is beneficial to you, you ought to praise the Lord because that's when you find your strength. That's when you find the endurance that finds the power to overcome. So it doesn't matter what sin it is in your life, what issue you're dealing with, the word has the power to overcome. Just like Jesus, when he said in, in, in St. Luke chapter 4 and 4, Matthew chapter 4 and 4, verse 4, So man shall not live by bread alone, so for it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when I begin to live by the word, it doesn't matter what comes against me, the word becomes my defense, my shield, my buckler, my strong tower, my defense, against the enemy. And I got a whole host of angels at warfare fighting for me on my side because God is with me and nothing can separate from the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I encourage you tonight, get in your word, study the word, get the word in your spirit, put it in your heart, put it in your mouth, speak the word over your children, speak the word over your family, Speak the word of your health. Speak the word. It doesn't matter if you got cancer, diabetes, heart condition, COPD, arthritis, lupus, bipolar disease, personality disorder. It doesn't matter if you got all, any type of disease or illness, HIV, AIDS, whatever, sickle cell. It doesn't matter what it is. Speak the word. Let God handle it. Don't you worry about it. Don't you get consumed in worrying, trying to figure out what am I going to do sustain my health, you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. That's what God says in his word. I believe that. I receive that. I stand on that. I do not allow fear to paralyze me. 
I do not allow fear to cripple me. I don't care when I was going through cancer. I refuse to let it get me to a place of unbelief. When I went through cancer, I never let it stop me from trusting God's word. I didn't care if I was going to die. I didn't care. Because I knew that in him, I live, move, and have my being. And if God be for me, doesn't matter what it is, it will never separate me from his love. He can never separate me from his love. So I encourage you tonight, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart, continue to carry you through the trials sometimes of your life, the difficulties, the pains, the hurts. Allow his love to flood your heart till it overflows. Even when the enemy comes and says, you know what? You got inc incurable disease. You're going to die. You keep trusting God. I can care less what the doctor says. That's just how I am. I care less what the doctor's report says about me because my Bible tells me whose report will you believe. I choose to re believe the report of the Lord. And every day, God keeps on sustaining me, blessing me, strengthening me, empowering me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? He's doing the same thing for you as a child of God. So Lord God, tonight I thank you for your word. I pray that your word have not fallen on deaf ears, but your word will penetrate the core of our hearts where unbelief tries to settle in. We find ourselves hurting and, and grieving over things, oh God, that was not in our power to change. But you give them the strength, oh God, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of hurts, to keep on holding on to your unchanging hand, that you will comfort the broken hearts that you bind up their wounds. You promise God that joy will come in the morning. You will give us beauty for ashes, a garment of praise in place of heaviness. And I thank you, Lord God, that you would do that for your people in Jesus' name. Let the word penetrate our hearts to bring change in our minds, in our conversations, in our confession, that everything we do would line up with your word, God. That we walk by faith and not by sight in the promises of your word that you order our steps in a pathway that you have chosen, that we stand fast in the liberty of Christ has made us free. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, it's not talking about gender, it's talking about children of God, be ye steadfast, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about me, unmovable, don't be easily moved. Always abounding. Keep on accelerating to the next level in the work of the Lord. Keep letting God take you to the place he has for you. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Anyone have any questions or comments tonight? Any questions or comments? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I mentioned last week, and believe in the Lord to be able to start next month um, a virtual class. I'll still do Facebook Live, but I want to start a virtual class with those who wants to come on live video chat where we can still communicate through video chat where we can have dialogue with each other, where we can talk to each other, can, can discuss the Word of God together. And if we want to have any questions, we'll be able to talk to each other and I can answer the questions. Well, you can respond to a question I might have for you. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm waiting on God to really uh, open the avenue for us. It's a pro old program called Blue Gene, called Blue Gene. And it's a very uh, beautiful streaming source, virtual streaming source. And it's, it's very effective. I, I know a church in Chicago that uses that every week, Refreshing Springs uh, Baptist Church out there in Chicago. And uh, I, I've been on their live stream several times, uh, preaching on a Sunday morning for their service. And they just found a pastor. I thank God for opening the door for that church um, to be able to find a pastor they needed to uh, be the shepherd of the church over there. I thank God for answering prayer because we've been praying for that for quite a while. And God finally answered and moved by his spirit. So you keep praying for us that we grow, that the class grow, get more participants, keep encouraging people each week to come on to our Bible class. And I, I pray it's been effective for you to help you continue to grow in your, in your walk with the Lord. So as always, you might be on here tonight. You might be a backslider. 
don't know the Lord as your Savior, you might straight away. And I, I pray tonight that you have a repentful heart. The word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You may never accept the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Savior, but tonight you can. You might be a backslider. You can be restored because God loves you. He loves us all. And he's waiting with arms wide open just for you to come back to him. He says he's married to the backslider. He will heal your backsliding ways. If you don't know the Lord and Savior, he says, who have, a man had a hundred sheep, lost one. He left the 99, went to go find that lost sheep. And he said, he found that lost sheep. He said he began to rejoice because there was one sheep that was lost and now been found. He's talking about you, a child who don't know Jesus, Lord and Savior. So tonight, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord God, acknowledging that I'm a sinner. Ask you to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowingly, cleanse my mind, cleanse my heart, and restore me in right standing and right relationship with you, and save me from my sin. And I thank you for forgiving me for all my sins and washing me clean in the blood of the Lamb. And I ask the Lord to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that made a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, anything else before we go? No other questions or comments. You can sow a seed into the ministry. Link is on here. You want to sow a seed with, with, with uh, the, trying to get donations for our project we're doing for our church to expand the building. So you want to sow a seed into the ministry. I got the cash up inf information on here. Also, feel free to connect to my uh, YouTube channel uh, to find other lessons that we talked about previously. And even this lesson tonight will be on YouTube as well. So encourage others to join us. Share the link with the Bible classes to other people that you may know may be interested in even going over the lessons that we have already previously discussed. It. And let it be a blessing to them as well as it's been a blessing to you. So if it's been a blessing to you, don't forget to sow a seed and subscribe to my channel, the YouTube channel. And may God continue to bless and keep you and enrich you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, Holy Spirit, rest you and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, until next week, shalom, peace be unto you. Y'all have a blessed night. And stay excited about Jesus. Walk in your purpose for purpose and make it a great day on on purpose, because today is a great day to have a great day, even a great evening, because you made a choice to have a great evening in the presence of the Lord. Have a good night. Till next week. Shalom.